as well. So uh, in that fond hope, I think we move on and to our next presentation of the day, our next uh, webinar of the day, which interestingly is not by a university, but by a research center. It's the Forschungszentrum Jülich. The Forschungszentrum Jülich is um, located very near to the RWTH Aachen University, which Indian students generally are well aware of. And uh, we have two experts joining us for this session. A uh, very warm welcome to you. Unfortunately, I can only see the term Forschungszentrum Jülich mentioned underneath your webcam. So I believe Frau Dus is one of the persons there. I'm sorry if I cannot make out, but maybe you can introduce yourselves and share with our participants in the next 20 odd minutes or so what the Forschungszentrum Jülich has to offer. So the floor is all yours. Please. Uh, Frau Dus, we cannot hear you. I think you may have to unmute your microphone. <laughs> yeah, on the top there are these uh, little icons. There is one icon that looks like a microphone. I think you're pointing to that. So if you click on that, ideally we should be able to hear you. Well, uh, for the time being, I'm not able to hear you. But you do see the icon. Is it green? It should be green, because if it, it's not green, that means that uh, it's not yet on. It should be clickable. If not, the arrow next to the microphone, is it not clickable? It's not clickable. Um, I'll request technical support from my colleague Alice if she has any ideas as to what we can do. Um, what uh, kind yeah, is? I do not know. The best way is that you once again uh, log, in. log out and log, in. Yeah. and log out and log in. Because last time it was working. And I suppose you are using the same equipment that last time. Mm -hmm. No problem. Uh, can I request you to just close this window altogether and log in once again? Maybe I think that's exactly what they're trying to do right now. And in the meantime, I am sipping a cup of coffee sitting here. And I'd advise all of you to do the same. It's a long evening that we have. It's in total six presentations spread over three hours. so. A cup of coffee is definitely not a bad idea. In the meantime, that we're trying to get reconnected with our panelists. If you want to take a short break, please feel free. I already see questions coming in. I can uh, try to look at some of these. Uh, I don't see the questions anymore. One minute. I think now they're back. Uh, maybe a proof it would be a, a good idea to talk about our scholarship the DAD is providing because there are a lot of questions in that field. That's true. It's uh, a good idea. So Thanks, Alice. Uh, small information. Um, Absolutely. The basic yes, one. That does, in fact, give us some time to talk about the scholarship issues. We've had many questions since we started this evening. and. Um, I think especially now this presentation from Jülich is going to be very relevant for those seeking scholarships because the DAD scholarships are, at least in India, are available majorly for those who are looking at PhD and postdoc studies. So those of you who are interested in doing, let's say, master's programs and so forth, can you hear me now? Um, I see that uh, a colleague. Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Yeah. Wonderful. Let me just complete one sentence, and then we hand over to you. I was just uh, talking of scholarships. And as I said, since the Forschungszentrum Jülich offers possibilities of doing research, and uh, that's basically the level at which the DAD scholarship and funding in India is, uh, well, most, let me say, liberally available. So this is one uh, instance where I think after listening to this presentation, maybe we'll again take up that issue, but for sure. That's it. And now I'm handing over 
to uh, the ladies from okay, Ulish, thank please. Thank you so much. Hello, India. <laughs> Hello. Greetings from Germany, from the Forschungszentrum Ulish. Um, Ulich is one of the largest European research facilities we do have, and we want to give you some insights today of what we are doing and how we are structured. My name is Sabine Duis, and I am today together with my colleague from the HR department, Alyssa Arts. I myself work in the International Relations Department here at the Forschungszentrum Jülich. Forschungszentrum Jülich, I would like to give you some facts and figures. We were, fun, we were founded around 60 years ago already, so we have quite a good history and uh, on which we can build. The um, Forschungszentrum Jülich is found, uh, founded, no, it's funded currently, excuse me, it's funded currently by 90% of our federal government as well as by 10% of the state North Rhine-Westphalia. We are dealing per year with a budget of around 620 million euros, which is quite a good number of um, available money. And 40% uh, of this budget comes from third-party funding. The structure within Jülich, uh, our Forschung Centrum, we do have 11 research institutes. And these 11 research institutes themselves have, again, a lot of sub-institutes or sub-departments, I would call them. All in all, we have around 80 or more than 80 institutions here on our facility that deals with research and development. We do have, of course, uh, within the structures, a board of directors, so four people who are managing our uh, Forschung Centrum as well. We do have a supervisory board as all these organizations and a scientific technical council who supports us on the scientific orientation or the strategy and what, what direction the research should be done. In 90, uh, excuse me, in 2007, um, the Forschungszentrum, or better to say, one of our researchers, and we are very proud of Peter Grunberg, got the Nobel Prize awarded for research in the area of the quantum computing. Better to say, he developed devices, so he did the male cornerstone in the area that um, computers' uh, drives can save more data. Um, Forschungszentrum Jülich um, employs currently close to 6,000 employees, and from these 6,000 employees, more than 2,000 people are scientists, whereas we have additionally 867, or let's say 807, visiting scientists coming from 65 countries from all over the globe. Um, Forschungszentrum Mühlich is, is, by the way, a member of the so-called Helmholtz Association, one of Germany's big, big um, parties in the research landscape. And the blue numbers you can read here in the brackets are the numbers from our Helmholtz Association. So we have a budget of 4 billion euros. We are uh, having 36,000 employees and 12,000, around 12,000 scientists in the Helmholtz Association. Forschungszentrum Jülich's strategic research area are the energy sector, the bioeconomy sector, and the information sector. Whereas in the information sector, we have a lot of different facilities generating information within a broad range of research. And all about the core facilities are centers here in our Jülich Forschungszentrum um, deals with a lot of um, engineering uh, parts, I would say it in this way. We have indeed three engineering institutes, <coughs> excuse me, um, existing, and um, they are planning and constructing the very big instrumentations uh, which are used uh, in the various institutions. However, in each of our institutes, or in a lot of institutes, we do have engineers as well employed, and we are really having masters and PhD students in this area. Now coming a little bit into the areas and the different research areas, 
So looking in the part of information, we are dealing here most of the times with the biological information processing and the brain and emerging information technologies and of course in the high performance computing. We have one of Europe's fastest supercomputing center based on our campus and we are very proud of it. And we are really interested to understand um, how, for example, the human brain is working to use this information to develop the next generation supercomputers, so the exascale supercomputers for tomorrow. Going further in the energy sector, we, have, we are developing really strategies in the energy sector. I do not know if someone has heard already that Germany is quite um, working in the, in the so-called Energiewende, which means that we step out of all the nuclear power plants in Germany. And we are doing here, by all these different areas, really lots of uh, research to get forward to make the world more secure and more healthy in this way, as well, of course, in this area, all the climate re uh, aspects are included. Then we are dealing in the bioeconomy area, which goes in the right direction or in the same direction with the climate um, change. So in the energy sector, the environmental research, we are dealing in the bioeconomy area with sustainable resource production, with food production, the climate change, and we try to produce energy and value products. Um, use we doing this in the agrosphere area by looking into the soil aspects and soil questions. So how the water is, doing, is, is being distributed in the in the ground and the soil. How the plants can grow better with less water, for example. Then we are of course looking in the plant sciences area, and we are producing. We are trying to produce biomass. Um, for different aspects, for example, to produce as well biofuels. And in the biotechnology area, we are dealing with a lot of questions in the microorganisms um, area and doing enzyme engineering. And here the engineering part is not the, the um, um, classical engineering part, but the enzyme engineering means genetic engineering of organisms to produce better um, products, for example, antibiotics. So I would say this is the very, very brief and rough overview of what we are doing here in Uli in the research area. And now I like to hand over to my colleague from the HR to give you more insights of what kind of opportunities for you might be possible here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sabina. Um, yeah, my name is Alissa Arz, and as Sabina already told you, I'm working in the Human Resource Development and Recruiting Department, and within the next minutes, I would like to give you an overview about the employment opportunities at our research center, and um, yeah, we, we offer positions for candidates at all stages of their career, as you can see on this slide, and um, the positions are on the one hand in the field of research, such as PhD and postdoc positions, and on the other hand, we also offer positions for young and experienced professionals um, in the administrative or technical infrastructure as well in the field of research management. And within the next slides, I would like to focus on um, yeah, positions and employment opportunities and framework conditions um, for university students and PhD students. So to start with um, university students, um, yeah, there are um, in fact three options um, to contribute to interesting um, research projects and to get professional experience while at the same time being enrolled at a university. So um, the first one is to do an internship. Um, this can be a voluntary internship or an internship that is obligatory due to your study and examination regulations. And internships normally um, should last at least three months and at most six months. And um, in case of an obligatory internship, um, the duration of the internship depends on what's mentioned in your study regulations. And in most cases, you will receive a remuneration um, according to internal policies for the internship. The second opportunity is to write your bachelor's or master's thesis here um, at Jülich. Um, some topics um, for this thesis can be found on our website. 
Um, the other way of finding a topic is to um, yeah, check the website, check our research topics, and if you find a group that you're interested in and you would like to contribute to the research, then um, directly contact the contact persons of the institute and ask for a position for writing your master or, or bachelor's thesis. And um, also, um, when writing your thesis here at ULIC, you will receive um, a remuneration according um, to our wage law. And the third and last opportunity is to work at a under, as an undergraduate assistant. Um, this is possible for a maximum duration of 12 months, and um, yeah, you will also be paid a compensation um, according to our wage law. Uh, now I would like to continue with our opportunities for um, yeah, doing your um, PhD at Jülich. Um, every year we supervise um, yeah, nearly 950 um, yeah, PhD students here at Jülich and um, yeah, they come from almost 50 countries and 41% of them um, yeah, came from abroad in um, 2016 and um, yeah, this is contributing to our international character um, of Washington Central Jülich, which we are really proud of. And um, the vast majority um, have a contract um, for the period of their PhD. So um, this is, in most cases, a three years contract that includes a guaranteed funding for this period of time. And um, the yeah, prestigious scientists that are um, supporting the PhD students um, um, through their supervising, um, this um, allows most of our PhD students to stick to these three years that are aimed. Um, yeah, as we are not a university, uh, we are not allowed to award the academic um, degrees and therefore um, the doctoral thesis is defended at an affiliated university. Um, so as a PhD student here at Jülich, you are enrolled at one of the universities um, yeah, which we have um, joint professorial appointments with. And um, here's a map of North Rhine-Westphalia and um, Germany and also Belgium. Um, that shows our partner universities and also the number of um, joint professorial appointments. And I would like to point out the RWTH Aachen. Um, this is um, one of our most strongest partners uh, with a total number of 53 professorial appointments. And um, this is the largest university of technology in Germany and one of the most renowned in Europe and especially in the field of engineering sciences. Um, additionally, we offer um, a training program, for example, from the HR department. We have a training program that includes more than 200 trainings, such as scientific writing or poster design, to support our PhD students. And in addition to that, we um, have the graduate schools like Hitech or Biosoft um, that also support um, our uh, doctoral researchers with training courses and networking events. And this also leads me to the last point of this slide. Um, yeah, the networking is also something that is really important um, within or for our PhD students. And um, this means, on one hand, the um, networking with partner institutions, but also the networking within our research center. And this is strongly supported by the DOC team. It um, yeah, represents the interests of the PhD students here at Jülich. And um, they, for example, organize technical lectures, but also events such as football tournaments to foster the communication between our doctoral researchers. Yeah, at least I would like to give you some more general information, and I would like to start with um, our wor working environment. Um, we have a quite international working environment, and um, yeah, currently 57 um, colleagues of Indian nationality um, are working at our research center, and this is the fourth largest group um, right behind colleagues from Germany, China, and Russia. And uh, we are really proud of being ranked as number 21 of Reuters Top 25 Global Innovators Government. Um, this ranking is a list um, that ranks the publicly funded institutions that are doing the most to advance science and technology. And within this ranking, more than uh, 600 institutions have been analyzed, and we are really proud of being number 21 of them. And I would like to give you an overview about the most important selection criteria if you are interested in applying for um, yeah, a student, university student, or a PhD position. And one thing I want uh, to mention at first is the English language. Um, so it's definitely necessary to be able to speak English, um, but a certificate is not a must. It's nice to have, but for applying, it's not a must yet, Jülich. Um, in most cases, the colleagues of the institutes um, decide while talking to you, for example, when conducting an interview, if your English language skills are good enough for working here at Jülich. Um, another important point, um, yeah, your grades. Uh, we expect a minimum GPA of grade B or 80% or in the German system it's the grade good. 
And in addition to that, um, yeah, you should bring excellent work experience, especially when applying for a PhD position, as well as um, comprehensive methods um, expertise. And you should be open-minded and enthusiastic. Um, yeah, also the part of living is something that's quite important. Um, while some of our colleagues live in Jülich, um, a large amount um, are also living in the um, cities around, such as Cologne, Aachen or Düsseldorf, which you can see on the pictures. And the cost of living depend on the city and the location of your residence. So the city centers are more expensive than the suburbs, and living in Jülich is, more, um, is, is not as expensive as living in the big cities around us. Um, another thing I would like to point out is the International Advisory Service. Um, it's part of the personal management and it provides advice and support for all employees of our research center who come from abroad. And they will also help you with anything regarding your visa. Um, but please keep in mind that um, if you're interested in working here at Jülich, then you should care for your visa um, early enough. We would say six months in before um, are necessary so everything will function well. And for the last point, uh, the catering, um, yeah, we have a canteen here on our campus. It's um, located directly at the lake, um, especially in summer. It's quite beautiful. And here you have a good choice of um, food. And even as a vegetarian, you can nearly every day choose between different meals, what's yeah, for me quite important and I think also for many of you. And this is already um, the last part of our presentation. We would like to thank you very much for your attention. And now we are looking forward to answer your questions. Right, dhanyawad to you also for giving such a wonderful presentation. And um, you know, interestingly, when you mentioned some keywords during your presentations, I could see a surge in the questions. And um, maybe that's also how we will how we will start. One surge came the minute you mentioned internships, because there were already a number of questions being asked: How do I go about internships and so forth and so forth? So that was the first surge, and the second surge came when you mentioned the eligibility criteria that you're looking for and you quantified it with 80%. So there are some questions related to that in terms of what is the flexibility of 80%, somebody saying if I have 70% or almost 80%, so how do you really look at the applications? How strict is the 80% yeah, rule? Um, thank you for these questions. Um, so we, we wish 80% um, yeah, as a requirement. But, of course, there can be some exceptions. So on the one hand, it depends on the institute where you are uh, applying. So there are some institutes that focus really, really strongly on grades. They say if there's something under 80%, we don't accept it. And there are also institutes, and then even within the institutes, there are contact persons who are um, yeah, more flexible with the um, grades. And they say, OK, even if the grades are not as good as we expect, but um, for example, you bring um, really, really great work experience, then this could be um, yeah, some flexibility within it. I'd like to add a point. The institute usually, so the employer, the, <clears throat> the employer directly will do a Skype conference with the applicants. This is mandatory as well. And there, you know, you have to outline really um, your strength and your weaknesses and um, you really your experiences. And if your grade is not at 80%, so if it's lower, then you should have might be some other uh, skills or some other experiences in other areas which you can might be bringing to the discussion. Right. Absolutely. I think it's very useful information. Thank you for sharing this. I have another question. Uh, which uh, comes from Gargi. She's a lady and asking, what is the male-female ratio of staff at Jülich? Would you have that I figure? know that um, in, within the PhD students, we have um, nearly one-third women and two-third men. Um, within the whole research center, it's difficult to say, because within the administrative um, departments, they're working more women than men. And within science, um, there are more men, uh, more men than women. So um, yeah, and I know the um, rate of one-third um, of women within the PhD students. So it might as, as well belong to the topics we are working in. We have a lot of physics, you know, and uh, physics is very dominated by men so far. Might be it will change in future, we hope as well. But we are preferring to employ women, really. Yeah. If there is a female application, we really look at it differently nowadays. Because we want to really, really uh, support female scientists. 
Perfect. Thank you. I hope that answers your question, Gargi. I'm moving on now. Uh, as you can see, there's a little darkness behind me. Sometime the lights went off. Now we're back. One second. Yeah, now I'm back. <laughs> um, yeah, moving on to the next question. You had mentioned earlier on that uh, there's a three-year funding guaranteed during the PhDs. And there were some questions I'd also be interested in knowing. What does this funding cover? What What is the purpose of the funding that you provide? during these three yeah, years? Um, so you, you get uh, for PhD positions um, a payment or um, yeah, a compensation that's according to our wage law and it's um, yeah, the pay grade 13 of our um, collective agreement of the civil service and it um, depends on the institutes and the positions. It's in most cases 50 to 75 percent of this pay grade which is a yeah, monthly net amount of maybe 1,200 euro. And with this money, you can cover the cost of living, but, but you have to care for it yourself. So you get the money each month, um, but you have to care for uh, yeah, finding a um, yeah, flat. And as I said, in some cities, it's more expensive than in others to live. So you have to manage um, this budget mm -hmm. on your own. Thank you so much for that. I'm also side by side looking at some of the questions that are coming in, so that's why my eyes are not always looking directly into the webcam. Please excuse me for that. Um, this is done. Moving on to another question. There, there were quite a few Bhumika, Anupama, Francisca, who are asking about the, the focus area or the subject thematic areas that are offered by Ulich and the ones that they have are in direction computational biology, nanotechnology. So my question, does Ulich cover these areas or could you maybe go to a slide where again you emphasize on uh, on the areas that are where top end research is happening at yes. your place? Um, in, the, in the area, in this broad area which we call information, there we have of course all these areas which were mentioned recently by you, so we are focusing quite uh, heavily on the biological information processing and the brain, so we're doing a lot of brain st uh, studies, we are um, working on a brain atlas where you can really see the areas in the brain, you speak, you can see and you can bring it all together or you can do it all at the same time, how it's really coordinated by our brain, we're interested in these areas as well. We are in the neuromorphic computing and that's I think address parts of your questions as well. The neuromorphic computing is learning from the brain, from the structures of the brain. It might be using as well nerves within computers in the next generation computers. So that's a very, very big focus and we are interested in getting really great, yes, masters and PhD students or postdocs on board. Thank you for the clarification. I think we're almost through also with our half an hour. But I'd lastly want to touch upon one more aspect because this presentation by a research center was a little special in comparison to the others who are universities. And I have the feeling that maybe not all our uh, participants are aware of, let's say, the, the system. You have mentioned it already during your presentation, but I would be happy if you could emphasize once again on the fact, being a research center, you do not have courses that you're offering. You're not the one who's giving degrees, but the degrees are coming from your partners. You had mentioned that, I know, but would you be nice enough to re-emphasize on that point once again so that it's clear to all the others also that it's basically the research that they can do at Ulich, but the certification or the degree would come from a university. Yeah, of course. Um, so, exactly. yeah, we are cooperating with the university. So if you would like to work during your studies as a university student here at Jülich, or if you would like to do your PhD here at Jülich, you have to be enrolled at a university. And this map um, that you can see here on the right, um, yeah, um, it, it shows North Westphalia and the universities, um, yeah, we have joined professorial appointments with. So um, let me give you an example. If you would like to do your um, PhD here at ULIG in the Institute for Energy and Climate Research, um, then you are enrolled, for example, at the RWTH in Aachen. 
um, but you're only enrolled there. So you're working and doing your research the whole time here at Research Center. And even uh, when doing an internship or writing a bachelor master thesis here at Jülich, you're enrolled at a university, but you're full time here at the Research Center. And um, you are only within your PhD one time again at the university, and this is the time when you defend your thesis at the end of your PhD studies. I hope this um, makes it a bit clearer. I think, uh, thank you so much. This was very important because I could make out from the questions that there were still some doubts, but you've put it uh, very, very clearly and very nicely, and I'm sure that all the attendees have benefited a lot from your inputs here today. I'd like to thank you, Sedanyavad, once again to both of you for joining us and for enriching all the listeners with your guidance. Thank you, and uh, hope to have you around again thank next time. Thank you very time. much. Thank you so much. Right. Wonderful. Now that was a really